On today's episode, lies, damned lies, and statistics. What COVID can teach us in manufacturing. Today's episode of End of the Line is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.tv today. Writing as Mark Twain, in 1907, Samuel Clemens said, There are three kinds of lies. Lies, damned lies, and statistics. Now, there's a reason why that apocryphal saying is stuck for over a century, and it's based on what we do with numbers. Now, as engineering professionals, now we're expected to use mathematics effectively, intelligently, responsibly. And if there's one essential difference between scientists and engineers and the lay public, is that we measure everything with uncertainty. The tolerance in a measurement means as much or more than the measurement itself, and we use statistics to wrestle this problem to the ground. While SPC and Deming made modern manufacturing possible, advanced statistical techniques were the cornerstone of epidemiology, which is where we are right now with COVID-19. I see daily numbers about the spread of COVID-19, and in my opinion, very few of those numbers tell us anything useful. Typical figures include total number of cases, total number of fatalities, and infection rates. Now, how much actionable, useful information does this impart? Very little. Imagine this on a factory floor. You have a plant full of injection molding machines making parts, and the defect rate is unacceptable. So you ask for, and get, the total number of parts that all the machines made in the last six months, and the total number of defective parts. Now from this, you deduce the defect rate. Does this help find the problem? Well, obviously not, but the real problem is the lack of context. Which subset of presses and molds among all the machines in the factory are making the bad parts? That's the target. And for COVID-19, the question is, which cohort of the population is most at risk? That's the logical starting point for measures like lockdowns. In manufacturing, segregating suspect or non-conforming parts was standard operating procedure, so we know lockdowns well. In fact, in my injection molding example, parts are often marked to identify the date, shift, and sometimes the individual machine on which they're made. Why? Well, because log traceability is the key to finding the incapable machine or process. If the stats show that the defective parts came from a particular machine or tool, well, we isolate that tool, maybe even that line, but we don't stop the entire factory. In the current COVID-19 world, we know that some cohorts of the population represent the majority of the fatalities and ICU admissions. Yet we apply the same control measures to entire populations. Now telling a 21-year-old college kid that they can't go to a dorm kegger is not only impossible, it's ineffective. Telling that same kid that he shouldn't go to his grandparents' house or visit his chronically ill sibling, well, that's targeted, sensible control. In manufacturing, we strive to isolate the bad parts, not the good ones. Why is it different with COVID-19? This episode was brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification button for our next episode. For deeper engineering content, visit engineering.tv for exclusive shows not found on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.